heptachloropropane is the main starting reagent for the synthesis of hexachloropropane. Someone would make hexachloropropane because it's an incredibly useful for producing metal chlorides, such as uranium tetrachloride and tungsten hexachloride, without super special equipment. The chemicals needed for the synthesis are chloroform, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, a drying medium such as molecular sieves or calcium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, perchloroethylene, also known as tetrachloroethylene, and anhydrous aluminum chloride. The first step is to purify and dry the chloroform and perchloroethylene. Both chemicals must be completely dry as water will react with the aluminum chloride and inhibit the reaction from occurring. Chloroform is added to a separatory funnel. Then concentrated sulfuric acid is added. This step is to remove ethanol. Chloroform is stored with small quantities of ethanol to increase stability for a longer shelf life. The funnel is then shaken and vented a few times until adequate mixing occurs. The sulfuric acid is then transferred and chloroform is washed with sodium bicarbonate solution to remove any leftover acids and water soluble impurities. You need to be careful here because gas is produced in the neutralization reaction, which could cause some problems. The sodium bicarbonate solution is then removed and the chloroform is washed with distilled water a few times. After the washings, the chloroform is dried with molecular sieves and sealed off to the side while a similar process is repeated with the perchloroethylene. The difference is 12 molar hydrochloric acid is used as the washing acid and it is not washed with any sodium bicarbonate solution. Hydrochloric acid removes any amine stabilizers which increase the shelf life. Stabilizers are useful for storage, but can mess with reactions. Removing them before using the reagents is best to prevent any issues. In most general applications, stabilizers can be left in.
The anhydrous aluminum chloride did not need to be dried or purified, as I just bought a brand new bottle and it's all good to go. It is important with aluminum chloride, especially the anhydrous form, to store it in a nice dry location. Because if it's not in a dry location, it'll just suck moisture out of the air and become a soggy liquid at the bottom of the bottle, which can't be used for reactions. The next step is for the reaction to take place. The reaction is carried out in a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. In the flask, first 13 grams of anhydrous aluminum chloride is added. This is followed by 150 grams, 100 milliliters of chloroform, and 90 grams of tetrachloroethylene. The reflux is carried out on a hot plate with a stir bar. Stirring is started and the temperature of the hot plate is increased over an hour till the solution is boiling. The gradual temperature increase is to avoid any thermal runaway. In the case of a thermal runaway, carefully remove the flask from heating. Aluminum chloride can be difficult to work with if not experienced and safety precautions should be ensured so that no problems occur. The reflux is then left overnight to take place. It took around 15 hours to reflux, but by the time I got to it, 18 hours had elapsed. Through the reaction, the color changes drastically. When we add in the aluminum chloride, we can see darkness already begin to form, but after the reaction, it is a dark liquid with a reddish tinge to it with a little bit of green and a little bit of black into it also. The flask is then decanted into a vacuum funnel. This will remove any unreacted aluminum chloride and solids. I wash the flask and chloride with chloroform to ensure a good transfer. The filtered liquid is then washed with water a few times in a separatory funnel. The water hydrolyzes any aluminum chloride that was carried over and was unreacted. The water also removes any water-soluble impurities. It is essential to be careful due to the chance of a thermal reaction occurring here. Water reacts with aluminum chloride exothermically. Through the washing, the color changes drastically. This is a good sign.
The water is then removed and the washed solution is dried with sieves. After the wash, it was a bit still cloudy and I wanted to filter it. Because of the small amount that I had here, I just filtered it with a syringe filter, which worked very well. Went very clear after passing it through. The next step is to remove any unreacted chloroform and perchloroethylene. This is done through vacuum distillation. The setup is similar to a simple distillation, but with a vacuum pump and chemical trap connected to the vacuum adapter. Please note that there is some danger associated with low pressure glassware and ensure that all the glassware that you're using is safe to use with no chips or cracks. The pump is started and we see that boiling occurs at low temperature due to the low pressure. Chloroform and perchloroethylene have a boiling point much lower than that of heptachloropropane. This means that we'll heat till no more liquid comes over and increase temperature till heptachloropropane comes over. Once we see heptachloropropane coming over, the flask is switched for a new one. My little red vacuum pump was not cutting it for the job and it kept thermally shutting off, so I had to switch it out halfway through the runs.
The reason why we use a vacuum distillation here is to avoid any thermal decomposition of the heptachloropropane. And also by decreasing the pressure over the material, the temperature in which it boils at lowers. The lowering boiling point makes distillation easier. This is the shortest condenser of this style I have, and it ended up cooling a bit too well. The heptachloropropane solidified in the condenser, so I turned off the cooling and heated it with a hairdryer. This worked very well, and I heated it enough so that it would collect in the flask as a liquid. Over time, the condenser did cool back down enough so that it would start solidifying again, and I repeated the process until all of the liquid had transferred over. No more liquid is left in the boiling flask, so the distillation is done. I melted all the product into the flask and disassembled the vacuum distillation apparatus. This represented a yield of 122 grams with around 80% yield. Overall, this is a relatively simple method for producing a weird precursor. In the following video, I will reduce heptachloropropane into hexachloropropene. Once I have hexachloropropene, I plan to create different metal chlorides for reactions. I'm currently working on an orgometallic project that works with different metal chlorides. Thank you for watching to the end. Considering you made it to the end, you might want to subscribe and place a like. I have much more content to come and you will want to stay up to date on the channel. That is the best way to do so. If you have any comments or questions, drop those in the comments section below. Or even better, join my science discord server where I look forward to seeing you again. Well I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So my cad, I bought me a jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all